Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Probably Got This, and today we have another build for you all. This is my new build series, my Invincible Solo Builds. This series will focus on taking a class and making a build that can hit hard, is easy to play, that can survive with ease, and most importantly, solo the game. The best part about these builds is they don't even need a mythic item. And this is our last build of the series. We have five other builds for each of the classes, so one for each class. And this one today is the Invincible Solo Paladin Templar build. Real quick, I just want to give a massive shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. Thank you for the support. I'll have more on that later at the end of the video, but I appreciate everyone. And if you ever want to check us out at probablygotthis.com, we have that website down below. Our Discord has an amazing community with multiple guilds. And you can always watch me play live, twitch.tv slash probablygotthis on Tuesday through Friday. So in this build, I'm going to set this up differently and give you item loadouts so you can play not only at high CP levels, but item sets you can go for at level 3, level 25, and level 50. That way you are guided through the build from level 3. I think a lot of times players don't know what to do in the beginning stages of build, so I want to try to alleviate that by giving you beginner setups to work towards, then have a full setup that will really make this build shine. So for the race today, we are using the High Elf. High Elf is an all-around good hybrid race in my opinion. We're going to be using a mix of stamina and magicka skills with this build, so the spell recharge passive is really nice for us because it's going to restore magicka or stamina, and it will also reduce the damage we take from when we channel or cast abilities. We also have the elemental talent passive that gives us increased weapon and spell damage, and the Cerebane's boon will also increase our max magicka by 2,000. This race is a solid choice for this style of play, but obviously you can pick any race that you want, but I do like the high elf for this build now for the class we're obviously using the templar uh the templar might be one of the easiest classes to play and one of the easiest classes to make into a hybrid build you have access to some of the most ridiculous skills and we have an execute that is insane and we have great buffs and we have great passives as well that just really make this build just a great class to play we also have great spammables and aoe damage so making in this into a paladin was actually very very fun and we are going to go over what all those skills and passwords are here in a few but the first thing i want to do is the stats okay in this hybrid build we are actually going to have all our points into stamina and with that we have 28.6k max stamina on the front bar about 31k on the back bar uh we have 22.2k max madge uh and again this is um unbuffed and our spell and weapon crit is sitting around 50 percent uh, when you're leveling this character, make sure to dump all points into stamina. The Munda Stone we are using is the Thief for crit rating boosts, and I think the Lover and the Shadow are fine as well. You can get all those Munda Stones anywhere in the base game. They're all over the map. Uh, but the other thing that we are using is our Long Fin Pasty with Melon Sauce food buff. This is going to increase our max mag, health, and stamina for just a flat rate. It's a really solid food to use, I think, for a hybrid builds and I just like using it a lot in, in most of my builds. Moving on, what skills are we using in this build? What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the setup of the final iteration of the build. I'm going to explain the skills and why they are there and then I'm going to show you how you should level your character from level 3 to reach these skills quickly or efficiently. Starting on the back bar, we are using the skill Invasion. Yes, we have a sword and board on the back bar. Remember, this is a paladin build so we have to lean into that RP a little bit. But simply put, this is just an engagement into a fight skill so it's not meant to dish out a ton of damage or anything. But but it helps you engage it helps you get into the fight because it is technically a charge it has a 22 meter range it stuns enemies and it can actually stun up to 50 percent longer based on the distance traveled so it's just a really nice engagement uh, to go on the back bar and i'll show you kind of how to use it once we get to the rotation our next skill is razor caltrops this is again just amazing damage over time uh it reduces enemies movement speed uh and it applies major breach which reduces the physical and spell resistance of enemies uh for four seconds which is really really good for us the next skill is Mystic Orb. This is from the Undaunted line. This is uh, just a great solid damage over time skill. Uh, this is going to do nice damage to trash mobs, and I can show you how to utilize this to the best of its ability. The next skill is Restoring Focus. This is sort of our sustain skill, but also has a buff attached and a heal as well. Uh, so you will use this before a fight to get major resolve, which increases your spell and physical resistances, and you'll also restore 242 stamina every one second. If you stand in the circle, you will heal for 1337 health every one one second so that's just nice to have as well the last skill is blazing spear uh this is a great damage over time it's just melts enemies i love the animation of it it's just going to be something that you use 
every rotation. So make sure you have this up. Your ultimate on this bar is Remembrance. This is your, oh crap, I'm gonna die ultimate. This is gonna give you major protection and it's also going to heal you in a channel for a lot of health and it's just fantastic. This is just something, again, if you're about to die or something, make sure to pop this. And again, since we have that passive for high elf, we will take 5% less damage as well as we're channeling this. Now, on the front bar, we are using the one and only Biting Jabs. This is one of the most broken skills in the game, but now it gives major brutality and major sorcery, which increases your weapon and spell damage by 20% for 10 seconds. So this is just so good for like a hybrid build and just for Templar in general. It just wrecks. It does like AoE damage. It does physical damage, single target damage. Like it is fantastic fantastic for Templar. I mean, it does everything. This this does everything. It's really, really good. You're going to want to be using this a lot in your rotation. We're going to go through that rotation here a little later. It's one of your main skills you're going to be using. The next skill is Power of the Light. This is actually a really cool skill that does physical damage and also copies the damage that you do to any enemy and releases 50% of its additional physical damage to them, depending on the damage that you do to them. So the max copy damage, uh, what we're looking at right now is 11.7k. That scales off of your weapon damage. So when your weapon damage is higher, which will go even higher, biting jabs, this will also get increased because you're going to have that major brutality and major sorcery, which will increase your weapon damage. So that can go up. Um, you're also going to afflict them with minor breach, which reduces their physical and spell resistance by 2974. So we're getting major breach from Caltrops and minor breach from Power of the Light. Next skill is one of my favorite Templar skills is Repentance. This uses the corpse mechanic, kind of like the Necromancer, but essentially you'll need corpses on the ground to use this. But when you do, it will give you health and stamina back uh, for each corpse nearby. And while slotted, you gain minor fortitude, minor endurance, minor intellect, which increases your health, stamina, and magic recovery by 15%. So just having this on your bar gives you that recovery by 15%. It's amazing. I love using this as well after an ad fight because you get all your stamina and health back. It's really solid to use, so make sure you're using this when you need it. Next skill is Stampede. This is our two-hand skill because, again, we are Paladin. So we're Paladin. We're using two-hand. We're using Sword and Board. But this is really used uh, for our um, one of the armor sets we're using, but it is a great ad clear as well. If you don't want to use Biting Jabs, it's just a great skill to use, but it does proc one of our sets, which is really important for surviving sometimes. So keep that in mind as we uh, go through the armor sets. The last skill we're using is Radiant Oppression. This is your execute. This is ridiculous, okay? This does insane magic damage, uh, and then it deals up to 500% more damage to enemies below 50% health. So you're going to use this when the boss is under 50% health. You're not just going to spam just this. You're going to use other skills as well, which we will go into the, in the rotation. But this is your bread and butter when the enemy is under 50%. Again, since we're a high elf, we are channeling this. So we're going to take 5% less damage, which is really, really nice. The ultimate on this bar is your main ultimate. This is Empowering Sweep. This has very low ultimate cost. So this is going to be up all the time. It's going to do solid damage, and it's going to do even more damage with more enemies that it hits. So enemies are going to take an additional 3799 physical damage every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. The duration is extended by 2 seconds for each enemy hit. You're also going to get Empower for the duration, increasing the damage of your light and heavy attacks by 40%. So the longer the duration, you're going to have that Empower for longer. So it is a great ultimate. You want to use this as much as you can. So the progression with the skills, again, from level 3, you're going to have your class skills available, right? You're going to have Biting Jabs. You're gonna have Sunfire, and you're gonna have Rush Ceremony. You wanna put all three of those in your bar, because you're gonna need Repentance and Restoring Focus from Restoring Light, Power of the Light, and Oppression from that line. And you're gonna need two skills, or technically three skills, from this line. So level those up pretty evenly. Uh, you're gonna want all your passives, and then on your front bar, make sure to put a two-handed skill so you can get Stampede. And then eventually you're going to want to put on uh, Sword and Board so you can get Invasion, so you can put Puncture on there. Start leveling up that as well, okay? That's like one of the easiest ways to do that. Alliance War, you are going to need Caltrops. Uh, if you don't have Caltrops, it's fine. I just love using this skill. You can level up your PvP line to level 3, like less than 15 minutes at level 10. I have a video on it in the description. Uh, that'll get you to level 3, uh, and then you can get to the level here at Caltrops by just grinding some Battlegrounds or Cyrodiil. It's re it really shouldn't take you that long. That will be how you get Caltrops. And then for your guilds on Daunted, uh, the Mystic Orb is something you're going to have to do dungeons for, so you'll just do pledges, random dungeons, and you'll be able to get this pretty easily, I think, after update 33, uh, which is live right now, because they changed the Undaunted Rep, and you should be able to get this pretty easily. Now, let's go into the passives real quick. Again, you're going to want every single passive for Templar, except for the Enduring Rays one on Dawn's Wrath, because you're not using any of the things that it mentions. 
but every other passive is fantastic for you. I mean, some of the Adric Spear passives are ridiculous, like increases critical damage, um, and then one that when you deal damage with the Adric Spear ability four times, rapid succession, you deal magic damage. You also get increases in weapon and spell damage by 6%, so that's again going to increase your power of the light. It's just insane, y'all. Like, there are so many good passives for Templar, so make sure to get all of them except for that one in Dawn's Wrath. Two handed, you could get all these. For one handed shield, you could get all these. For armor, you can actually get all the medium armor and you can get all the light armor passives. Uh, for the guild, you're going to want to get the undaunted passives. And then for racial passives, you obviously want to get these as well. Now, let's go into the armor sets. Again, I'm going to talk about final iteration of the build, and then we will get into alternatives and progression from level 3 to CP160. For our armor sets today, okay, we're using a little bit of a interesting mix, because again, we are a hybrid build. Our monster set is Slime Crawl. This is uh, in Wayra Sewers 1. It's pretty easy to do. It's going to give us crit chance and minor berserk at all times, increase your damage done by 5%. We're using medium head and medium shoulders with max stamina and divines traits. Body pieces are false gods. This is actually a trial sunspire in elsewhere. This is going to give us crit chance, minor slayer, and more crit chance, and it's going to reduce the cost of your magicka abilities by 8%. When an enemy you recently damaged dies, you restore 2454 magicka and gain major expedition for 8 seconds and it will increase your movement speed by 30 percent the reason we're using this is again we are a hybrid build right so we have a mix of skills here this is a magicka skill that will cost stamina this will cost magicka the reason i'm using that one is because it is also going to have some nice passives in the armor line we're going to be able to get magic recovery which is going to be really nice for evocation we're going to get spell resistance and we're also going to get weapon and critical rating increased by 1098 i really like that it will be something that will help us since we don't have to put any points into Magicka. We can put all our points into Stam, which is really, really nice. The key to hybrid builds, in my opinion, is to have a spammable that is like a Magicka or Stamina ability, and then your other abilities be a Stamina or Magicka, so it offsets, and so you can go and dip into those pools. So that is our armor set on the body. So these are Divines with Max Magicka Enchants. Now, our, our other one is Hexos Ward. This is Jewelry, okay? This is the uh, Overland set in the Deadlands. This is going to be such a good set for solo play. And it's going to be able to be procced by our Stampede skill, which I talked about a little bit ago. But what this does, when you deal critical damage, you get a damage shield that absorbs 12,305 damage uh, for six seconds. This can occur every seven seconds. Again, every time you Stampede, Stampede always crits. So that will give you a damage shield. So it really helps you survive. I love Hexosword. It's fantastic. Um, we're using the Battle Axe here. Jewelry, again, it's we're using Robust and Stamina Recovery. Weapons are using Precise and Absorb Stamina. I absolutely love it. Um, and then our sword and board on the back is just agility. That's going to give us max stamina. That is easy to get. You can use other ones if you would like, but I'm trying to make this as easy and accessible as possible. We're using precise and absorb stamina, the shield, uh, divines, and max stamina. That is our item sets. And so some alternatives for this is you could switch false gods out if you want to with like Vicious Ophidian, but I personally like using the False Gods. Um, Vicious Ophidian is just going to reduce your stamina costs, uh, but I like having the False Gods because, again, it's going to help us with our Magicka sustain since, you know, we have 22k max Magicka. And when we go into this, again, if you want to use the Ring of the Pale Order, you can. It makes it even easier. You would just switch out one of the rings and put a shoulder piece of hexos ward on there instead and then just have the slime crawl mask or vice versa just to get the crit chance and then have five piece hexos ward and ring the pill order but you really don't need it with this for leveling okay so at level three since this is a hybrid build something that i would recommend is just getting hunting's rage twilight's embrace uh or julianos um those are gonna really carry you throughout the whole game until you need to farm this uh these sets um and you don't really need to do anything crazy when you're leveling so when you get to level 25 you could use um again hunting's rage twilight's embrace julianos uh you could use vipers you could use venomous set if you would like but i would try to stay with hunting's rage twilight's embrace and julianos basically all the way to cp 160 and you should be able to craft this for yourself at some point but you might have to get someone to craft it for you in that progression now when you get to cp 160 the first thing you can go for is hexos ward hexos wards in the overland of deadland you'll be able to get this stuff pretty easily so you can complete that and you can change out one of your sets the next thing i would do is way rest sewers where sewers is really easy get your slime crawl monster set and then after you do that go and do the sunspire trial uh, and get false gods okay that would be my progression of how to get the build 
build. Let's go ahead and go into the CP real quickly. The CP is pretty standard to all my other solo builds. Um, we're doing 50 in the Thaumaturge, 50 in the Master at Arms, 50 in the Fighting Finesse, and 50 in the Reaving Blows. We're slotting all of those. This is the combination that I found that was just best for me. And then obviously you can put points in everything else. It's gonna take you about 140 CP to get started on this. Same in the red, so 140 total in all. This CP page, Rejuvenation, Survival Instincts, Bloody Renewal, and Sustained by Suffering will all be slotted. It's pretty simple, I always do this. And then all your other points can go into the other passives that don't need to be slotted. And then the green is up to you. It's pretty simple, um, it's pretty standard for CP in my opinion. Now, let's go into the rotation. This is the uh, part that everyone needs to know. Again, it's pretty simple, but you do have to kind of pay attention on your front bar here once we get to it. But on the back bar, what we're gonna do is when you're in a fight, you're gonna initiate with your circle here. If you stand in this, you're gonna gain health, but we're not gonna be standing in this most of the time when we start. Now, we might use it in the fight and a boss, but for the start, we're not gonna be standing in it. So you're gonna activate this, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna throw your caltrops your spear, and then you're gonna throw your mystic orb. The reason you're throwing your mystic orb first is because you see how slow it does. It works, right? As soon as you throw your caltrops at an enemy, enemies are gonna start running towards you, okay? So that's, that's gonna happen. So obviously this target dummy is not gonna run towards me, but as soon as you throw your caltrops, they're gonna start running. So you wanna get your other AOE down and then do this because this is going to be able to do damage as, as it goes through all the enemies, right? So, after you do your Mystic Orb, you're going to Shield Charge. Now, they're not going to be as far away because they are going to be coming to you, and that's fine. But then you're switching bars, okay? And when you do that, you can actually bait them to come back into your Mystic Orb to take even more damage, okay? That's that's an effective way to use Mystic Orb. Let's go over that real quick. Again, it's a little weird, but Caltrops, Spear, oh yeah, make sure you use your Circle. And then you're going to Orb, and then you're going to Shield Charge, and you're going to get like behind them, and you can just start Biting Jabbing. You can just start doing that with light attacks. See how I'm hitting light attack, jabs, light attack, jabs, right? You see that? It's really up to you. Um, if you feel like you're losing health, you can use your stampede to uh, get a shield. And you can use stampede to clear mobs as well, but stampede is there for your shield, okay? Um, I love it. And it's also a great initiation. So um, if you're fighting over here and there's another enemy over here that you want to go to, you can literally just stampede over to these enemies and uh, go back and forth, right? That's something that's really nice for Stampede. So it gives you a lot of options, okay? So again, I'm gonna go back to my front bar. So imagine we did everything on the back bar that I just told you. If you're in an AOE setting, you would use, you know, Biting Jabs, Light Attack, Biting Jabs, Light Attack, Biting Jabs, Light Attack, okay? That's literally all you really have to spam. Um, again, you can use Stampede to get a shield, a big shield. And then once uh, you Biting Jabs about four times, okay? you're gonna want to switch to your back bar and apply everything else. Now, the enemy should be pretty close to dying by that time, but if they're not, just do your rotation again, uh, because when you're throwing these AOEs down, you're gonna be th you're gonna be doing a lot of damage before you even get to the front bar. So when you get to the front bar, it should take a few biting jabs and you should be able to clear some enemies. Now, you can use Empowering Sweep to get your light attacks up and also to clear enemies out as well. Once these enemies are dead though, you're gonna use Repentance and to get your uh, resources back. Now let's switch to a boss. A boss is no different. You're gonna use your Focus. You're gonna go Caltrops, Spear, Orb, and then Shield Charge in. When you're at the boss, you're gonna Biting Jabs, Light Attack, Power of Light, Biting Jabs, Light Attack, Biting Jabs, Light Attack, Biting Jabs, Light Attack, and then Power of Light is gonna go off, and every single time Power of Light goes off, just reapply it, okay? But when you need to switch bars, switch bars back, apply everything again, then switch back. You're gonna literally do that until the boss is 50%. Now, when the boss is 50%, you're going to use your Radiant Oppression, okay? This is your Execute. Now, you're not just gonna stand here and just do this. That's not what you're gonna do, okay? You still need to do your rotation, your back bar stuff. So what I would do is I'd make sure power of lights going, use your oppression, biting jabs, oppression, light, uh, power of light, oppression, biting jabs, oppression, 
power of light so that's kind of the rotation i would use for the execute because what that does is biting jabs will do some damage it will also get that um weapon and spell damage to always be up with the major brutality and sorcery the power of light will always be going down so you can get that final blow and then you do your oppression in the meantime so you can get that execute 500 percent extra damage as well that's what i would do when you're in execute phase now again y'all this is a rotation that you have to use lightly because as a solo player, you're going to have to kind of ad lib or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you're going to have to kind of make things up on the fly. Like you can't just stand there sometimes and just do damage. You have to sometimes move around. You have to uh, activate shield. You have to heal. So keep that in mind. But the one thing I just don't want you to do is I don't want you to just sit here and execute phase and just use oppression. You need to use other things as well with it. Okay. I think a lot of people do that sometimes. And that's just not using the most effectiveness that you can with your skills because while you're doing this you literally can have power of light going um because you're going to be doing a lot of damage to this guy so you want to get as much damage to this guy as possible before power of light proc so you can get a massive hit on them that is the rotation um if you have any questions about that let me know down in the comment section because i'll be gladly to answer uh these these comments i know sometimes i get a lot of trolls in the comment section uh that don't understand that this is a solo build uh and so yeah just let me know down in the comment section what you guys um have questions about and uh i will try to answer them as best as i can but this is the last build of our solo series if you want to check out any of our other builds i have them up here in the cards make sure to go watch them i'll have my ultimate templar class guide as well up in the cards so you should go check that out as well but i appreciate everyone coming to watch the uh, video today thank you so much make sure to check out our links below again thank you to all our patrons and youtube members but until next time y'all just remember have faith be great and i'll see you on eso